The other cool thing is map eight. You can map eight different things to knobs and they could be anywhere in the project. So I can map feedback and then I can map the dry wet or the overdrive. Then I can map this track volume. I can map uh, the pan of the whole project. You know, everything could be done from this map eight. And then you could drag out multiples of any of these. I could have two LFOs, I could have two map eight, I could have five map eights. One thing I will say is when you use the map eight though, it doesn't give you any information about what you mapped on the push. So it's kind of a bummer, but you know, you can look up every once in a while. So I can change the feedback, dry wet, track volume, left and right of the whole project. I use this sometimes when I perform live to be able to command multiple tracks in one spot. Um, if I'm, especially if I'm not using like touchable or conductor or something like that. Okay, last but not least, uh, this is a really cool device, Envelope Follower. It uses the audio before this device and it follows the volume level. And then that amount is then used, if I play a note, is then used to be mapped somewhere else, anywhere inside of this project. So you could have um, this on another track, you could put it on drums and mess with uh, modulate your synths or synths on drums or vocals on synths and cats and dogs living together, all that stuff. Um, I'll put a link to a video in the cards that I did on my Josh Spoon account where I mimicked how uh, Isotope Neutron or McDSP, I think something 500, does where you can use one track to then dip a certain frequency range based off of an envelope follower. Uh, but here we'll just keep it simple. All right, so I'm gonna map this to the delay time of this rack that I built. You can set the min max, everything there. I can change the gain. So it's not actually changing the gain, it's just attenuating the gain inside of this device. Cool guys, I hope this is just helpful to you. Just gave you some ideas of some cool things to look at inside of Max for Live Essentials. If you haven't downloaded it, or if you've had it for years and you're just like, I don't really know what to do with this. Now you know just a couple ideas. Um, play with some effects, just do what I did. Pull some effects out, start mapping them, and you'll start getting hopefully a vision of uh, how you can use these in your projects. I'm Josh Spoon, Producer's Kitchen. Don't forget about Max for Life Madness. We're still rocking that all throughout March uh, 2017. Go to theproducerskitchen.com to enter to win from Sonic Faction Isotonic Studios, uh, also Surreal Machines, and I'm going to put a couple of things in there myself. Don't forget to always be creating.